So excited to be chatting with uh, not just a fellow female, but the lead singer of two amazing bands, uh, one being Mike Gray. Mm -hmm. You performed with them yesterday and just incredible. And uh, today, Voodoo Blood. And yes, they live up to their name for <laughs> sure. With me is Kim. What's your last name again? Janet, Kim Janet. With me is Kim Janet. I'm going to edit that out. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> With me is Kim Janet, the lead singer of both of those amazing bands. Kim, how are you? I'm great. I've just come off stage, so I'm a little bit exhausted, but feeling feeling good, feeling really good. And if you have ever seen them live, or if you plan to, get ready for quite a show, because it makes sense that she's a little exhausted. Oh, yeah. You are all <laughs> over that stage, girl. Oh, yeah. I mean, the whole room's a stage for me, usually, but because the audience was so immense, like, I was like, I best not go too crazy and jump on the bar and stuff because I might actually hurt myself this time. Uh -oh. But yeah, <laughs> you can't have that. But um, you're, first of all, I, I do have to mention how young you are because yeah. this is extraordinary, folks. <laughs> if we think about what we were doing at 23, um, it certainly wasn't what you're doing. And you are killing it. <laughs> Thank you. On stage, um, it's not just your voice, which I want to talk about in a second, but it's your performance quality. It is it is off the charts. Oh, thank you. Well, you know, we, we put on a show. That's what we always set out to do. We want people to go home and remember the performance. So, yeah, trying my best. Well, <laughs> I think you more than exceed that, you know. Um, I want to talk about your range because it's it's worth talking about. Yeah. <laughs> um, I heard a little rumor that you're kind of self-taught in the singing department. Is that true? It is, yeah. I mean, I used to do musical theater, um, and that's what I did in college. But I taught myself. I heard Lizzie Hale actually singing and I was like I want to sing like that like I just think she's incredible Lizzie Hale is my she's my idol so wow. yeah I was and I taught myself I watched a few videos on YouTube and you know I, I was an angry teenager at the time and <laughs> it just weren't we all yeah mm -hmm. oh yeah <laughs> you know um when we when we talk about voodoo blood mm -hmm. for a moment um you know it's goth it's dark it's heavy but it's also um, so stimulating to watch, and you don't mm -hmm. always see that with some of the darker bands, you yeah. know? You, you brought the audience up quite a few levels in oh, your yeah. performance and, and with all that, and it, it's something to be recognized, you know? Well, we want people to have a good time. That's what we set out to do, you know? We want people to have fun, and I think that's, uh, that's what we definitely did tonight. Like, everyone was jumping about and getting involved, so it was great. They were like, yeah! yeah. <gasps> I was like, wow, <laughs> she was done. And nobody really wanted you to be done, you know? <laughs> that makes me so happy. I mean, that's all I can ask for, so, uh, yeah. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, keep that personality, please. Don't <laughs> ever, ever change that, okay? I can't. <laughs> uh, Kim, your range is really uh, extraordinary. Um, you. You're welcome. I mean, you don't just hit the higher notes, but you belt them out. That's mm -hmm. difficult to do. It is quite difficult. Um, I, a lot of it comes from, like, inner emotion and inner anger and I just kind of go on stage and I'm just vulnerable and just let everything out you know so, you know when I get up on stage it's just like I just let go and um, I guess that's where all of the the big notes and the power comes from it's just pure emotion comes out of you yeah do you ever get nervous before a show or do you just feel excited and sort of in the, in the anticipation well actually for the Mike Gray show because these tunes, the, the ones that people know, um, there was lifelong skin fans there, of course, and were singing skin songs. So I was really nervous for that because I wanted to, to do a good job and I wanted to make everyone proud and I wanted to show that I could, you know, sing these songs. Like, they've only had male singers before, so I wanted to go out there and be like, well, you know, I'm singing these quite masculine songs and that was quite nerve-wracking for me, but... Um, once I got on stage, the nerves just disappeared and I was like, oh, I love this. But with Voodoo Blood now, because I know the songs are my songs, I don't get as nervous. I just get so excited and so buzzing. You know, I get nervous in everyday life. Wow. <laughs> okay. Like I get nervous taking the bus, okay. but <laughs> going out and doing that is so natural to me. I just love it. I love you it. could tell. You could tell you're so comfortable in that element, you oh, know? Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. So I was born to do, you know, like I, I love it so much. I don't think anybody would disagree with that. How do your parents feel about, I don't know, yeah. some of the, some of the goth <laughs> stuff and like, you know, just the, the whole, uh, the vibe. So my mom and stepdad are the, the best people in my life. I love them so much. They have done so much for the bands as well. Um, in Voodoo Blood, they do the artwork. So my dad's a comic book artist wow. and my mom is a graphic designer and games artist. So 
they've, they've done a lot of our artwork, our merch, and um, they're so supportive. Like, that I couldn't ask for, for a better family. No, you know? you know what? You are blessed <laughs> beyond words. Yeah, I really am. Like, mom, dad, if you're listening, you the one. <laughs> uh, I love them so much. So, What are your plans for the future, would you say, if you're just looking ahead, even just a little bit? Um, I mean, with my brain and the way that my mind works at the minute, I kind of take each day as it comes because um, I'm quite like an anxious person, really. So I have to just take every day and just do my best to get through it. But, you know, I just want to keep doing music. Like, that's what I live to do. Like, I love music and I'll continue to do music for hopefully the rest of my life. Speaking of, you were mentioning some of the some of the writing for Voodoo Blood. Do you do most of the most of the writing for the band? We write as a collective, okay. um, but obviously, like I write the lyrics and the melodies. So, but we get together, we jam. Um, but yeah, the, you know, the, the lyrics are mine. So, um, folks, check out Voodoo Blood. Check out Mike Gray. You're right. going to be with Mike Gray a little longer, right? I mean, it's going to yeah. kind of continue on. We're doing an album together. We're currently recording it. Um, it's going to be released hopefully March next year, maybe around that time. Um, but we'll probably release a couple of music videos on the run up to that and stuff, which is exciting. And I'm going on tour with Black Star Riders with Mike Gray oh, um, wow. at the end of the month. So. Wow. Yeah, it's going to be good. In Europe and uh, the UK? It's just so around the UK. Okay. So, Great. Well, yeah. hopefully um, we'd love to have you in the US, so hopefully it's that's going to happen <laughs> sooner rather than later. Yeah. Kim, thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, thanks very much, everyone. All and, right. Uh, see you soon. <laughs> see you soon. I'm Rachel Logan representing ARFM here at Hard Rock Hell in Wales. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Thank you. Still in goosebumps from the Dan Reed Network that just got off stage. Saw your entire set. I'm here with Dan Reed. Hey. Hey, guys. Hi. Good to see you, Rich. <laughs> Good to see you. Nice to meet you. We oh. Met, we met on Instagram, uh, and now I get to meet her in person. She came all the way over from the United States to be here in this freezing cold weather in <laughs> North Wales. Brave woman. Cool. Oh, it, you know, it's worth it. It's worth it. And when I saw the Dan Reed Network on the bill, I was more than a little excited. I thought, you know what? I've got to just make this happen somehow. And um, what people are saying when you came off stage is really incredible. Mm -hmm. Your band, your sound, and your vibe is infectious. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's amazing, the fusion mm -hmm. of your music. You, f you, you hear rock, mm -hmm. funk, jazz, <laughs> yeah. blues, uh, yeah. and that's just on the top of my head. <laughs> um, you know, your, your sound is really something special and your music mm -hmm. makes people feel good. And I think mm -hmm. that's something everyone would agree with. And I think we need that mm -hmm. collectively. Thank what are your you. thoughts on that? Yeah, well, I think the network we've always been, even during the club days before we got our record deal, was all about celebrating, you know, kind of the weekend, um, writing dance songs, songs people could shake their butt to. But I grew up listening to Led Zeppelin, Cheap Trick, Van Halen, um, and I loved all that rock stuff. Dan Pred was into Rush, Dixie Dregs, the drummer. Um, so we came from that background, ACDC, of course. Um, and, but then Melvin and Brian, they came from more soul, funk, jazz backgrounds. Um, and then Rob Dacre, the keyboard player, has played everything under the sun. So we have such uh, wide taste as a group that we, when we write music, we want to write songs that make us all feel good about it, that we're not gonna get tired of playing that a year from now or a year, 10 years from now or 30 years from now. Um, so that's kind of where our sound comes from, is just all of us not wanting to be uh, bored with our music and just make sure it's got some fire to it. And you know, that's something that the audience can feel. It's not just they appreciate it, yeah. but uh, you know, you could see the looks on their faces, it's right? You could see everybody getting so excited. I mean, it's gotta be a great feeling. It really is. It's something, you know, especially in these times when we're so divided over different issues, um, especially in our, our home in country, our, yeah. that it just feels like it's it really good think to have our music be an escape from that and also not just an escape but also something that can kind of point you in a positive direction for the next day that's that's our that's my goal as far as an entertainer i want to go out there and say hey um it, life is worth celebrating it's really about uh celebrating life because we have more things in common the human race than we do the things that divide us so that's what i try to remind people of with our music there's people that that said you know god i can't even describe the dan reed network mm -hmm. but i know what i feel when i see them and mm -hmm. i know what i feel when i hear them and i'm i'm echoing people that i just talked to mm -hmm. that said this and i just wanted to pass that on thank you, know? you. That's, i mean that's really nice to hear um songs are like any relationship you don't just walk up to somebody and tell them you love them um you introduce yourself you compliment each other. You might go out on a first date. 
you know, go do something. Some people walk up to people and yeah, say they love them. That's not the best way to start a relationship. <laughs> no, it's right? not. So you want to uh, romance another person. And I think a song is a, a mini romance. You have the introduction and that first verse, that first chorus is the, in, you're getting the intention slowly across the whole song. And by the end of the song, the relationship is consummated. <laughs> Hopefully. consider it consummated I think <laughs> I think really with the entire audience I yeah, mean to see yeah. people clap to see people get so excited yeah, it fun. was a packed house yeah, let me fun. tell you so I think uh, with our music we try to really listen at least I do try to listen to the world um, whether no matter what uh, walk of life you come from and try to put that into some kind of song and then the chorus is just about going hey we're all the same we all share the same planet uh, we only have this one place to live. Let's figure our shit out. Mm -hmm. that's the Wouldn't goal. it be great if it worked like that? Yeah, that's the, that's the <laughs> it's a beautiful fantasy, by yeah, the way. Yeah, well, thank you. Keep that dream alive. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, doing my best. I'm teaching my son now. He's six years old. I got him into uh, Star Trek and Star Wars, so that's a big, good beginning. Yeah. Good and evil. Absolutely. Uh, Dan, what is next for the Dan Reed Network as we speak? Because yeah. you guys are huge here in the UK yeah, and uh, in Europe as well. Well, we're going to be uh, doing another studio session like the way we made our last album. We had a live audience. I've never seen a band do this before where we recorded a whole album in four different cities around the world and had them sing background vocals and just made them part of the band for the day. So we're going to do another session like that at David Bowie's old studio called Hansa Studios in Berlin on December 29th. And then we're going to play New Year's Eve in Prague in the Czech Republic, which is where I call home now. And then we're going to do some writing. I'm going to uh, spend most of uh, 2019 just writing songs for hopefully what's going to be the ultimate DRN record that we've ever written, uh, along with Rob, Brian, Melvin. Uh, and then record that early 2020 and release it the summer of 2020. That's the plan. That is so yeah. exciting. Speaking of Prague, do you speak Czech at I, all? I know a little Czech, yeah, a little bit. I don't know, uh, I can't have a conversation yet, okay. but I can definitely get around without getting punched in the face, so that's a good step forward. That's a really good step yeah. forward. How long have you lived there? It's been there about seven and a half years now. Wow, and yeah. you barely speak the language? Yeah, I'm just, I'm just <laughs> traveling so much. And, you know, my girlfriend, who we have a little boy, was six years old now, um, she likes speaking English. My son likes speaking English because it's easier than Czech. Um, he understands and speaks more Czech, but whenever I'm home, it's right back to English. So I don't get a chance to practice a lot because everybody in my house wants to speak English. So. Okay. Well, you know what? When you put it that way, it makes complete yeah. sense. So uh, things are going well. And yeah. what are your thoughts about the U.S., about um, maybe mm. expanding? Mm. I mean, you know, you're huge here, and it's great. Mm. What, 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 what are the possibilities there, well, do you think? You know, we, we toured with Extreme in uh, December last year. We got to support them, which was a great honor. I mean, we're all big fans of that band, and Nuno is just, to me, a guitar god. Uh, I grew up listening to Eddie Van Halen and never could play as good as I could never get there but watching Nuno I'm going oh you know if I have a man crush it's Nuno you know okay. um, and, and then uh, I think they might have us come support them when they tour the states again there's talk about that um, I'd love to tour with anybody over there uh, as a support act I, I'm a big fan of Night Ranger if they mm -hmm. tour in America again I'd like to play with them I'd like to play at the Monsters of Rock cruise with the network because that seems to be a great way to because people from all over the country come there and then all if over we, the world too yeah, I mean right? they have so many international exactly. fans and there. if we can do a good show there on the boat then they can go out to their respective states and spread the word and maybe we can go do little club tours in the beginning in the states again um, it'd be really fun. It's, you know, radio and there's no MTV anymore and all that kind of stuff. So it's really about word of mouth now. And, and I think uh, we've been back at this for four and a half years. So everybody seems to be enjoying what we're doing. So hopefully we'll get over the States and start playing a lot more. That's our goal. Too. Heck yes. Yeah. Oh, I so hope so. Dan, it, catch the Dan Reed Network, especially if you are able to in, uh, in Europe or the UK. Really incredible. And you will be blown away. I, I, you can hold me to that. I'll put it in writing. Instant message it to you. Not a problem. <laughs> Dan, thank you so, so much for spending time mm -hmm. and finally got to see you guys live. I mean, yeah. literally gave me goosebumps. I'm honored to hear that. Thank you, Rachel. Uh, Femme Fatale just got off stage and just killed it. I'm here with lead vocalist Lorraine Lewis and bassist Janice Tanaka. And uh, so thrilled about that. You guys, what an amazing, energetic set. And I can't believe you even saw me because I was a little far back, but I was dancing. And I don't know if uh, the UK crowd dances as much as us Americans. Yeah. Would you agree with that? 
Well, not for this, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, I saw you, girl. I saw that big, beautiful smile. I was like, yeah, there she is. Oh it was awesome. It was, oh we had a great show. I'm a little sweaty and messy. Uh, makeup's like effed up, but uh, yeah, all good. You know, it's so exciting that you're here in Wales, in the UK, and that's got to be a great moment for you guys when it comes to your upcoming shows. I mean, here you are. It's, it's so cool. It's great, yeah. Well, you, you should talk, because it's been a while since Femme Patel was here, right? It's been a long time. We were here in, gosh, like 1989. That's the last time you were in the That's UK? That's the last time I was in the UK. It's, yeah, we played at the, at the Marquee back in the day. And I know the marquee isn't around anymore, so that tells you how long it's been right. since we've been here. Um, but yeah, great to be here. The crowd is awesome. Maybe a little older than they were 30 years ago. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> but that's okay. Uh, still rocking. A lot of people knew the songs, and, and it, it felt really great to be here. I, I, it was a packed house. Everybody stayed for the most part, I think, and that feels really good. So. I thank yes. you. Oh. Yeah, and you know, um, your signature hits, Waiting for the Big One, uh, In and Out of Love, uh, and the other one, with Lady Rebel. in Waiting? Oh, Lady, I was just well, a... Lady in Waiting is from the second record. Okay. But yeah. I think most people are familiar with Falling in, a, yes, in and Out of Love, uh, Rebel, uh, Waiting for the Big One. Um, and if you're a real diehard, then you know the song we opened up with tonight, which is Fortune and Fame. Mm. And you would only know that if you, if you own the album. Yes. Yeah, it was, yeah. One of my other bands did If, like they loved If, and we used to cover, uh-huh. That's cool. That's Five a heavy minutes, song. Yeah. yeah, that's a heavy song. I love it. And Courtney did amazing solos tonight. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, everybody was spot on tonight. It was a blast. You know what I love that Lorraine did tonight is that she went into the audience and high-fived and connected, <laughs> and uh, it wasn't an expected thing. It was a surprise. Like, nobody was expecting you it to surprised do It surprised me. Really? You <laughs> yeah. didn't have that plan? No, no. I, I don't ever really have anything planned. Okay. No. I, it just... You feed off the crowd and you figure it out as you go. I mean, we know what set we're going to do um, it, it, when we go out there, but you, you feel off the crowd. You, you, they tell you what to do, really. Mm. You know, and like I wanted to make sure that I connected with people and make sure that they knew that I was really happy to be here and honored to be here. So right. it was important for me to, to touch the people and get belly to belly with the people, if you will. I love it. You know. That the, that's the reason that we're here is because people give a flip and that's mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, and you connected with them beautifully, you as well. Oh, Judith. well, thank you, yeah. It was yeah. fun. It was fun. Yeah, it was fun. You can always tell that you guys are Very having proud. fun on stage. Yeah. I want to talk about what's next for Femme Fatale, which I believe is the Monsters of Rock Cruise Monsters coming up in Rock February. Cruise. Yay, Monsters of Rock Cruise 2019. <laughs> wow. wow. Is that nuts? That is crazy. It's going to be 2020 soon. We can't wait. We're going to be on the cruise. We're going to be rocking and rolling. All the girls are going to be with us. Kat will be with us then because oh, our good. keyboard player was not here tonight. We miss you, Kat. We love you. So, I want to mention your album uh, in 2016 because you had a big album come out then. And where are you album-wise and uh, writing-wise right now? That's, that topic has been brought up quite a bit. Uh, we released One More for the Road. You know, the right. girls didn't play on the record. That was for, Those were demos from back in the day that I had carried around with me forever and then finally released it, remixed, remastered, and released it. People seemed to dig it. That was great. And then, you know, playing this festival has kind of gotten us thinking that maybe we need to to throw something down and, and do some writing together. We've talked about it. We talked about it at the very beginning uh, when we first did the 2013 cruise. And then, you know, everybody gets busy. You know, obviously the girls are busy with the maidens. Everybody, Jan Janice plays with other bands and performs and writes. And, and same thing with Athena. So it might be time to, to sit down and, you know, have a pajama party and <laughs> do some writing together. <laughs> so maybe that will happen. I mean, I just feel so gr grateful that people really care. And I think people might like that. That might be cool. Yeah. So thank I you. I think a lot of Femme Fatale fans would, would love new material at the same time as the, the classics, you know? What do you think? Yeah, this sounds like fun. We're going to try it. Let's All right. Do it. And thank yeah. you so much. It was yeah, so great you. to see you in the crowd, oh. rocking and rolling. You're a sweetheart of a girl, and we just love you being our friend and, and girl power, Absolutely. like for, for real. And Absolutely. look at us. We could be like in Sisters. our own Spice Girls or something. We could. You like this uh, this this color action we've got going on? This uh, Technicolor almost. Yeah. Like yeah. We can do this on purpose. The red, this. brunette, and blonde. Yeah, it's like we could sell hair color. We, oh, we yeah. could. Okay. We really could. L'Oreal.
<laughs> so thank you all so much. Thank you so much for caring and for writing in and for staying with us on Facebook and always saying hi. And, you. you know, we all do our best to stay up on social media. You know, keep in mind that we all do have lives. We're busy and stuff, but we, we make it a point to get to everybody, every message that you ever send us. We always try to respond. I found a whole bunch of messages from a while ago. I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. So I'm sorry. So thank you so much, Lorraine. Thank and thank, thank you, you so much, Jen. Oh my Thank gosh. You. And check out Femme Fatale online and make sure to see them live whenever possible. Yay! I'm Rachel Logan here at Hard Rock Hell in Wales 2018 for ARFM. And um, I could say I'm excited, but huh, I will say my heart. My heart is pounding because I didn't expect to ever really have the chance to sit oh, with Doug on. Aldridge is the truth. <laughs> yeah, I, didn't have the, I didn't think I'd had the chance to sit with you, but here we are. I know. I didn't expect to see you here. This is really awesome. Surprise. Thank you. You know, um, we only met once, and that was in Lancaster, uh, Pennsylvania, recently for a Dead Daisies show, and it was great to catch you guys. We're going to talk about everything going on with Dead Daisies. Right. Um, I want to get this out of the way really quick. I've been to five NAMs, okay? The NAM show in Anaheim, California, the big music thing. Uh, Doug's been there numerous times. Not only have I never met you, I've never seen you. So I'm going to Facebook and I'm seeing friends of mine, people I know, and they're posting their pics with you. And I'm like, hey, check out this little ukulele. It's adorable. Check out the hammer dulcimer. I love this, right? And I'm excited and happy. And then I see someone with their picture with you. And I'm like, seriously? Never met you. Well, it's nice. Ever. To, it's nice to hang with you, and we're gonna get this. This interview is gonna be cool. But it's, basically, yeah. the Nam Show is giant. For those people, a lot of you guys know it, but it's it's a giant thing at the Los Angeles or Anaheim Convention Center. Yeah. Right. And um, it's easy to get lost, and it's easy when people are always moving around. We we probably it was like two ships passing in the night. God, and for five years, Doug, five years. So when I met you in Lancaster, I'm like, finally, <laughs> you I know, might not I. I've been there all five years though. Okay, well. Because I took a couple years off because I've been going there since like 1980. When I was a kid, since wow. 1981. Wow. And I went for a long time, and then I took some years off, and then um, yeah, I, I last few years I've been there. Okay, well, cool. Same here. Yeah. So this is I'll nice. See, I'll finally. see you this year for sure. Okay. All right, cool. And maybe we'll do a picture and a little hi. Um, rumor has it, I don't feel this way at all, but rumor has it that you're pretty attractive. <laughs> and, um, you know, I'm just kind of glad you don't have the open shirt this time because I, huh, I don't think I'd be able to get a word out, much less ask a question. You'd probably be, you'd probably be disappointed because the lighting director is the guy that makes everybody look good. So modest to put it on the lighting, because it certainly isn't your body or your hair or your face. That's not. I'm just saying. I don't feel this way, but I've heard that other people do. So I just want to get this out, and then talk about. Let's just talk about Revolution Saints right now before I fall on my face. Okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> Big fan of Revolution Saints and have been giving them so much airplay on the Refuge, and um, so I'm delighted that you're involved with the band and just doing a killer job. Didn't you just release the, the second Revolution Saints album? It came out at the end of the year. Okay. And um, we, we, we didn't do any promotion for our shows. It's just with schedules, especially since Dean joined the Dead Daisies, right. it's just been very difficult. But I'm glad that people really like the stuff and I really appreciate you awesome. spinning it on the station. And um, a lot of people, you know, at first... I didn't. I said to the guys, I don't want to do a second record unless we're all going to commit to, to play some dates. And then that kind of just didn't work out again. But people are still happy to get the music, you know. So we might do another one in the future. You never know if it works out schedule-wise. I hope so. Yeah, I mean, you and Dean joined the, the Dead Daisy, so that definitely took some time away. But the fact that you were able to even get to doing a second mm -hmm. album was kind of a, a happy surprise for a lot of us, you know. Yeah, it came together quick, and it was good. It was a good time because Dean had taken a break from the music biz, and he—it was time for him to come back. And I wanted to be there, and Jack wanted to be there for him. And he's just—he's such a great super talent. You know, it, was, it turned out I—I I like that record better than the first one. Some people like the first one better. Yeah. It's six of one, half dozen of the other, but um, 
But there's talk of us doing a third, so we'll see what happens. Okay, that is great to know for all Revolution Saints fans out there. The Dead Daisies are doing great, Doug. I mean, you guys are everywhere, and you know you did a lot of club dates in the U.S., but here you are at Hard Rock Hell Wales. So exciting. Yeah, this is this is an awesome festival. We played it before, and um, they, they put on a great production. The people are always really great, and the weather is pretty good, actually. Um, but yeah, the Daisies... You weren't here yesterday, then, were you? I heard or the day it, before. I was, okay. My friend Courtney texted me and said that it was it was nasty. It was brutal. But um, <laughs> yeah. but yeah, uh, so far today it's all right. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, but the Daisies are doing good. We've been really busy this year. We've just revamped the whole show so it's different, okay. and added some different songs, and um, just changed a bunch of stuff so that the show's going to be fresh. And then we also are on the shows that we're headlining. We're, we're doing this thing called Daisyland, which is basically the first 50 people that show up to the show with tickets get in free early, and we do a, like a private concert for them that's really great. It's, with, wow. you know, it's very casual and interactive, and uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of special. It is special. And, you know, I just recently chatted with Marco on The Refuge, and we were talking about how wonderful your meet and greets are run with the Dead Daisies. You, you know, you treat the fans the way that they deserve to be treated. You give everybody um, the same time. You're not pushing anyone out of the way. I love how your manager passed a guitar pick to everybody that showed up for that meet and greet. And, you know, little things like that really make a big difference, and they really mean something. You're right. And management is a, is a big part of what's going on with the Dead Daisies. It's he, he's really the sixth guy in the band, and he he um, is very hands on with every all aspects. And so, you know, for me, I, I have a, a certain amount of guitar picks for the tour, and it's like I don't yeah. if I, I don't carry them with me to hand out. I I use them, you know. Right. But he gets extra picks printed, so everyone gets picks. It's really good. You put a lot of passion and a lot of energy into every single show. So tonight, Dead Daisies are headlining Hard Rock Hell. This is day three. This is the last day. So I think you guys are so perfect to, you know, really finish off the whole fest. It's going to be great. I can't wait to hit the stage tonight. It's going to be awesome. Oh, my gosh. And your fans are going to... Love it beyond words, um, the way that I have these last few minutes. <laughs> I'm getting okay. <I'm> <laughs> Doug, thank you so much. Um, oh, I wanted to mention, I wanted to mention really quick, you have another project that you're working on, and I want to give you the time to, to chat about that really yes, quick. Yes, yeah. I, um, I have a, a, it's a pet project that I've had okay. for almost 20, it's about 20 years now, with a singer named Keith St. John. Okay. He's singing with um, his his day gig is with Kingdom Come right now. And um, so I had promised the record company Frontiers a yeah. new Burning Rain record. So Burning Rain, it's called Face the Music. It's coming out March 24th. And we planned it so that there was going to be time off for the Dead Daisies where I could actually promote it. Because the last time I did a, a Burning Rain record, I was in Whitesnake World and did not have any free time. So I'm really excited about it. It turned out great. It's yeah. kick-ass rock and roll. It's different than the De De Dead Daisies, so it's not, you know, we don't want to step in on toes right. or whatever. Dead Daisies is my day gig, okay. and I, I'm fully committed. But Burning Rain has is is got a passion in my heart, mm -hmm. so um, I'm excited for people to hear it. Hope you dig it. Thank you for everything you bring to rock. Thank, thank you so much for what you do for rock, because oh. if it wasn't for you, people wouldn't know about it. Somehow I think they'd know about him. Anyway, thank you so much, Doug. It's Thanks such a pleasure. My pleasure. Um, Rachel Logan at Hard Rock Hell, Wales. Thanks so much for watching. See you soon. So this is Dean Castronovo, by the way. You might know him from Journey, uh, Revolution Saints, and also the Dead Daisies. Yes. Of course, you've done other stuff. But, my God, I just want to touch on Journey really quick. There's been... Um, so much talk of, you know, Steve Perry coming back, not coming back, you guys getting back together, not getting back together. What's the truth, my friend? Well, um, I think Steve just wants to go his own way. Okay. You know, he's had his journey time and he's happy. Okay. And, he, you know, based on what I've been reading, he just wants to put that aside and, and, and do what he loves again. Okay. So I don't think, I personally don't think he's going to come back. I, I mean, what would be the point? Right. You know, right. but, uh, and, uh, and what is going on with journey? I mean, Arnell has been, been, been just phenomenal. Yeah. Well, they're touring. Yeah. They just got off the road and okay. I'm actually going out on the road with Neil and Greg Raleigh and Marco. Okay. Um, we're doing the journey through time tour, which is going to be a lot of fun. That'll be yeah. next year for Fantastic. January, February, March, possibly April. 
Okay, yeah. well, that is great news. Okay, let's move on to Revolution Saints. Okay. Absolutely such a big fan. Just chatted with Doug a second ago, and um, I've been giving Revolution Saints so much airplay ever since that first album came out. Um, oh, love it. I, I, I played Turn Back Time, right? And I'm like, not the Cher song. <laughs> yes, I fuck a turn back time. Oh it's not, I like Cher, too. I'm just letting people know yeah, did you, like you didn't remake that. I did not. <laughs> That's I did all I'm not saying. remake that. No, I did not. <laughs> um, really just the epitomizes melodic rock. And I've yeah. said that so many times with Revolution Saints. Yeah. Um, Doug and I were just talking about the possibility of a third album. But, you know, look, you guys are both in Dead Daisies and killing it. Yeah, we're busy as heck. This band works. We definitely keep ourselves busy. So we're talking about doing it in March or April of 2019. Okay. So that's what the plan is. Jack's going to be singing more on this record, thank goodness. Awesome. Which is, I mean, it's great that I'm, I, I was lead singing, but I'd rather see Jack um, be more a part of it because he's yeah. got an amazing voice and he's a great songwriter. So Absolutely. It should be good. Did you see him on The Haunting of Jack Blades? Yes. I just want to mention I that. I did see that and that was creepy. <laughs> 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 um, one of our ghost shows in the U.S., by the way, and uh, a really good one. I mean, she's a talented uh, oh, yeah. medium. But um, Jack said the funniest thing, if anyone ever catches this episode, he was chatting with, a, with her about somebody who is connecting with him from the other side and goes, why isn't he haunting Los Angeles? I don't understand why he's haunting this area. And I just, I'll tell you something, I was taking a nap and I woke right up when that aired. It was the best oh, ever. Oh, yeah, man. absolutely love him. Um, the Dead Daisies, just, uh, you guys are everywhere. And I met you guys, no, I didn't meet you. I sort of did, but yeah. not really. Quick. It was really quick, yes, uh, the meet and greet in yeah. Lancaster, PA. You know, this was a really kind of a dark club, right? Yeah. And, um, they just took over and absolutely had the room in the palm of your hands, and it was a blast. And uh, I was complimenting Doug, too, on the way that the meet and greets are run. Yep. It's the right way, Dean, and oh, I just yeah. want to congratulate you on really, because your fans are everything, you know, and it's just amazing that you guys um, respect that and you treat your fans the way they deserve to be treated, and I just want to mention that again to Dean. Awesome. Well, you know what? That's the beauty of this band. I mean, when I was with Journey and stuff like that, we had their I Love All Access things where you had to pay a bunch of money to, to meet the band and stuff, and it wouldn't be much of a meeting. It's like, I take a picture and to the left. I right. take a picture and to the left. Where this band, they engage. Mm -hmm. They're very engaged in the fans, and it's all about the fans, so yes, that's what we're doing it for. I love it. Love your energy, by the way. You're yeah. helping to give well, me I'm, more, and I like <laughs> that. Well, I'm on a bunch of antibiotics right now everybody's got this chest thingy that's going around but uh -oh. I'm, I'm not contagious so okay, good, I've been good. on my antibiotics for four days now so I'm good but boy good. it's definitely kicking the crap out of me I'm loaded up with vitamins and tea like You're nobody's okay. business okay You're I hope okay. so this has been great all right Dean we got to wrap this up but I want to thank you so much for doing this spontaneous thing with me it's a Quick pleasure to connect thank you, yes thank you so much thank you. bless you too Dean Castronovo we're at Hard Rock Hell Wales yeah.